messenger RNA cannot go back into the nucleus. That's the important point. What, next slide. So they're very fragile, as I said, in order to get the MRA into our bodies, it's wrapped in a lipid nanoparticle, which comes already done by the Moderna group. Um, next slide. Uh, next slide. Vaccine into the cells tells them, that in this case, it's going to tell them it's, it's the messenger RNA is going to tell the cells to make a spike protein that's the same as a spike protein on the coronavirus, the COVID or SARS CoV 2 virus. Um, then you're making these proteins within your own cytoplasm, and then it's going to be signaling the protein is going to be there in the serum and the blood, and your body is going to make antibodies. Okay, and then if you get a, a natural, you know, infection, the body is already going to have antibodies in order to, and, and we have to suppress uh, duplication, replication. Go ahead, next slide. So here the patient encounters the coronavirus and the antibodies and T cells are ready to, to fight the virus. Next. We've actually, uh, this slide is a little bit modest because the combination right now between the two companies, it's closer to 70,000 participants in the trials. So it's a very large pool. Um, and there's been very, very good safe data. They're having some localized injection reactions, yes, but no systemic illnesses, of course. And it's also been shown to prevent uh, serious uh, disease. Next slide. We've talked about the side effects, fatigue, headaches, and pain at the injection site. Next slide. Okay. So just to talk about the companies a little bit, Pfizer and BioNTech. BioNTech stands for Biopharmaceuticals New Technologies. And Moderna actually stands for Modified RNA. Moderna is based up in Cambridge. Pfizer is based in um, Massachusetts. It might be Andover, Massachusetts. Uh, so again, Pfizer is two injections, 21 days apart, versus Moderna is four, two injections, four weeks apart. Very effective. Talk about the temperature. This is minus four degrees Fahrenheit, as opposed to minus 103 degrees. Next slide. So they've been tested for more than three months now, shown to be safe and also to be uh, effective, very effective. Okay, next slide. Obviously they don't contain a live virus because they're making spike protein. So they're not making the virus. Um, so it never enters the nucleus of the cell. So it doesn't in interact with our parent uh, uh, DNA. Um, next slide. By the way, messenger RNA is also within the side of they don't live for a long time. We're constantly being replaced. Um, and so healthcare workers are going to be the first ones eligible for the vaccine. Um, and also other essential hospital workers um, and employees with a risk of high with a high risk of severe COVID-19, such as people 65 or older. Uh, next slide. And I'm gonna leave this to Ed to discuss this. I also wanna leave you though with, with some just real concerns that were raised, um, actually partially by uh, Rochelle Walensky, who's now gonna be the new head of the CDC when President-elect Biden takes over. Um, this is a great concern. We have a great vaccine, but the level, the incidence of the disease is such that um, even though we have a what they call a, a fire hose, unfortunately there's so many people getting infected that we cannot let our guard down. And so, so in one of the readings I saw, consider your mask as a wearable vaccine. It's very important that we do not 
let go of wearing masks and social distancing. Because the vaccine, by the time we get it out to everybody, there's still a lot of people going to be getting very, very sick. As you know, the mortality rate has gone down. Back in April, it was about 25% of you were hospitalized. It's now in the range of about 5%. But there is some concern, I was just hearing this morning a report from Staten Island that they're getting into big trouble there, getting overwhelmed. 